Rev up your engine! Today I'm going to answer the question, can you buy a good used pickup truck for a couple thousand dollars? Well, here's a $2,000 pickup truck. Now this is a 1994 CK. Don't believe this. It's not a Silverado. Somebody just stuck that on there. People often glue things on cars. As you can see when you open the door, well at least you partially can because a lot of it's faded away, it was made in Canada. Now personally I've always been satisfied with Canadian made vehicles whether they're Fords, Chevys or Toyotas. And back in 94 they were building these things pretty solid. Because if you check it out, aside from some scratches, the original paint job is still decent. And this one is the long bed. You got a lot of room inside here for carrying stuff. And back in the day, of course, they had chrome plated bumpers. They can take bashes, they don't care. They still keep going. You can see where people have smashed up stuff and they just patched it up, but they're solid trucks. Now this one was purchased for $2,000 and the owner only had to spend $400 in parts to get it running good. He had to put a fuel pump and some other minor stuff on. No big deal. And as we look under the hood, now it's got the venerable 350 cubic inch engine, but everybody goes by liters now. So that's the 5.7 liter engine. Now, yes, he needs to get an air cleaner assembly. It didn't come with that, but hey, there's plenty of those in junkyards. You can just get a aftermarket one to stick on top. Now, these are not racing engine. This one puts out around 200 horsepower but it's got plenty of torque. That's the advantage of the V8 specifications. It got a lot of torque. This thing had 350 pound feet of torque when it was first made. I'm sure it's lost a little bit of it now, but it still has a lot of pulling power. That's why you see guys always doing donuts and burnouts in these pickup trucks. Even though they're not necessarily a lot of horsepower, they got a lot of torque and that can spin the tires. Great for pulling. And that's what one of these pickups is known for. Pulling stuff. Towing stuff. Hauling things in the back. That's what they're made for. And when you check under this truck, you'll see the transmission, it's all shiny because it was totally rebuilt before the customer bought it. In this case, he bought it from a mechanic who got it for practically nothing, fixed the transmission, then sold it on. It's going to need a little exhaust work, as you will soon hear, but that's nothing a little welding can't fix. Because if you look, it's still got the original factory headers on each side, on the exhaust. And even though it's old as the hill being a 94, there's still a reasonable amount of original exhaust components. They're going to be rotten, but on Chevy, you can get parts anyways, dirt cheap. You can send away for them online, you know, or you can go to a muffler shop where they'll just, they got universal pipes, they can just cut them and weld on wherever the holes are. Or if you're really cheap, if there's one rotten hole, you can get cans, cut them open, put them over, clamp them on with radiator clamps. There's a lot of ways you can fix exhaust holes. And again, here, you know, it's old. The AC still works. It still blows cold air. Now this thing can still tow over 4,000 pounds. So it's decent for pulling stuff around. And with the big bag, there's a lot of work left in this old work truck. Yeah, it's got 182,000 miles on it. I've seen these old 94s go well over three, 400,000 miles. The weakest part is their transmission. And as I said, the previous owner, a mechanic, rebuilt this transmission because it was going out. That's typical on these. If you're looking at one and the transmission isn't working right, don't pay much for it. My customer paid two grand for it and that was after the transmission had been rebuilt, not before. If it was before, you would offer them less than a thousand bucks for the truck. Sure, it makes a lot of noise, but it starts right up. Let's take it up the hill and see what this old baby can still do. For an old truck, it still handles decent. Like they say, it drives like a truck, because it is a truck. And when you're just cruising along, hey, it's pretty smooth on a smooth road for an old truck. Listen to it when you're just gliding. It's very quiet. <laughs> and look, the electric windows still go down and up. I'm going to down. It's getting kind of hot. And strangely enough, when we started up, the check engine light was on. But after driving a little hard, look. It's off, it's not on anymore. And it's not running bad. And anyway, I'm getting a little long in the tooth and old. Hey, a rocking chair, not a bad idea. 
a truck rocking chair. When you go under the seat, really, all it needs is one bolt here, then it won't rock anymore. Not that big of a deal. So really, for a truck that looks this decent and runs decent, $2,000 isn't such a bad deal. Especially if you want to haul stuff, tow stuff. Hey, this engine's still got a lot of life in it. Yeah, it's the old fashioned throttle body fuel injector. It's a lot simpler than the modern stuff, a lot easier to fix. Let's say the injectors go bad. They're right on the top. Right here. One, two, they just bolt out. You can bolt new ones in. A simple job. Places like AutoZone, any discount auto parts store, they still sell this stuff and stock it. They don't cost that much. Easy to repair and replace. Lots of things are easy on these old trucks. Look at this, working space galore. Spark plugs are easy to get to. Distributors easy to get to. Everything is simple to get to on this thing. And part of the problem of this was he had to put a rebuilt distributor in this. There's the rebuilt distributor. One bolt, in and out. Not this complex electronic crap that modern cars have. Sure, they're not as fuel efficient, but rarely. Big old truck, they're all gas hogs. The brand new ones are gas hogs too. Unless you're getting into this insanity of 10 speed transmissions and GDI turbochargers, all that stuff's gonna break. I'll tell you right now, you're not gonna find any of these GDI turbo engines around running like this thing is when they're 26 years old. No way. Those things will all be in a scrapyard. They'll cost too much to fix, people will junk them. These. They're still going, they can go a long time. And if you're lucky enough to live further enough south that they don't rust much, hey, you find one of these that isn't rusted, whoo! Like I say, the Canadians, they knew how to build these things. Unfortunately, the ones in Canada are pretty all rusted out from the salt they put on the roads in the winter, but Tennessee and Texas, hey, got a solid frame on this thing. It can go for decades more if you wanna just keep it up maintain it, and like this one was done, the transmission was rebuilt. If the engine goes, you can fix that too. It's just the pushrod V8, easy, simple repairs that anybody who's knowledgeable about cars can do. So if you're looking for a pickup truck for two or three grand, you find one like this, buy it. And here's some bonus questions and answers. Well, here's some great news for all of us car owners and car repairers. The Massachusetts Right to Repair Information Bill just passed in the election. The original equipment manufacturers, the dealers, the car manufacturers, they're going to have to share their repair information, all this computer stuff, so everybody can fix cars and they can't start to hide it away. Fiat Chrysler started hiding it away a couple of years ago. Now, I'm a professional mechanic, so I can access that stuff because the mechanics all griped and I have a fancy launch scan tool and with an additional plug, I had to join a website that cost me 50 bucks a year and it checks to make sure that I'm a real mechanic and then it lets me access the Fiats and Chryslers. Well, with Massachusetts making everybody's got the right to get this information now, thankfully that'll be nipped in the bud. We don't want it that the only people that had information on the new cars are the dealers because they charge enough as it is. You don't want to have to be, that's the only place you can go. Well, the people in Massachusetts had some brains and they passed the right to repair bill for good for you guys in Massachusetts. The original Tea Party people in the Boston Harbor for the American Revolution. You people got some common sense there in Massachusetts. Bravo to you. Andy687 says, what do you think of a 95 Buick Riviera Supercharged? I'm thinking about one as a daily driver for 2,500 bucks that has 95,000 miles on it. You can use it as a daily driver, so 95. Unless it's in really good shape, you're gonna do a lot of repair work. Now those superchargers were decent superchargers. The main thing about them is they have a special oil and you wanna check it every once in a while because if that goes out, the supercharger goes out and costs a fortune to repair. But the idea of buying a car that's what? That's 26 years old, that's supercharged. As a daily driver, maybe not such a smart move. Now, 95,000 miles isn't much. And if you know a good mechanic, have him look at it first. And if he says, oh, Jesus, this is an immaculate condition, go ahead and buy it. But generally, 
People who buy supercharged engines rag the heck out of them because that's what they want, something that's super fast. Now, maybe it was a grandma who didn't know that much about it and didn't drive it that fast. That's great. You want a mechanic to check it out. Don't take any just wide open, I'll buy it and then try it out because that's a mistake. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.